It is the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Time flew so fast. We are now closing the year of St. Joseph. So December 8 this year gives us an opportunity to reflect together, to pray together on the two very important persons in the life of the Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. The question I throw to you right now is, is there ever a time in our lives when we do not need a mother anymore? Do we reach a point in our lives when we, when we can say, I'm successful enough, I'm rich enough, I'm stable enough, I do not need a mother anymore? Is there such a time in our lives? My mother died when she was 90. And uh, when she was 89 and suffering so many body aches, she would still exclaim at 89 years old, Nanay ko. She needed a mother at 89 years old because when we are in pain, when we are happy, when we are successful, when we feel defeated, it is the presence of the mother that we need. We want to run to our mothers in success or in defeat, in sickness or in health. There is no such a time in our lives when we cannot say, I do not need a mother anymore. And so it was with Jesus. Jesus needed a mother. Jesus was perfectly man, perfectly God. And he needed the womb of a woman in order to enter humanity. Jesus needed a woman to become a human being like all of us. Is there ever a time when we do not need a mother anymore? The answer is no. Even God needed a mother. And the father prepared the womb of this woman. That is why this woman was immaculately conceived, preserved from original sin from the first moment of her conception. Is there ever a time when we do not need a mother anymore? No. Jesus needed a mother. And when Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, where did Jesus get that body? Where did Jesus get that blood? The body and blood of Jesus is actually the body and blood of Mary. When Jesus feeds us his body and blood, Jesus was taught by a woman how to do it. Did Mary feed Jesus with her body and blood? Yes. When? For nine months in her womb, Jesus did not drink milk. Jesus did not eat bread. Jesus drank the blood of Mary. Jesus ate the flesh of Mary. That is how Jesus was for nine months. So, when we celebrate the Immaculate Conception by celebrating the Eucharist, let us remember that the body of Christ is the body of Mary because Christ received His body from the body of the Blessed Virgin Mary preserved from original sin. But the beautiful lesson of the Immaculate Conception the motherhood of the Virgin Mary is this, that in all of us, man and woman, there is the seed of motherhood. I am a man, but I am also called to be a mother. I am a man, I cannot bear a child, but I am called to be a caring, a nurturing, a tender mother. We should not be afraid to be tender. We should not be afraid to be compassionate. We should not be afraid to be affectionate. Those are characteristics of a good mother. And God has implanted those traits in all of us. We have a capacity to be mother for everyone. 
by our nurturing, by our caring. And in the caring, in the nurturing that we receive from the Lord, let us remember his mother taught Jesus how to be that. St. Joseph is the second important person in the life of the Christ child, especially now as we prepare for Christmas, the figure of St. Joseph stands out. I am told of an American legend that goes like this, that when God was forming the first father, an angel passed by and saw the figure to be very tall. And the angel said, that image is too tall. Children will have difficulty relating to a father so tall. But God said, father should be tall because children must look up to the father as a model. I do not know how tall was St. Joseph, but he must be a tall man because even Jesus, God-man, looked up to him as a teacher, as a hero, as a mother. And then the angel noticed that the hands of the man who is soon to be called father, were very big. And the angel told God, those hands are too big. They will not be able to tie ponytails of children. But God said, the hands of a father should be big because the hands of the father carry not only his problems, but the problems of his wife, the problems of his children. Big hands. I do not know how big the hands of St. Joseph were, but I am sure they were very big because they carried the creator of the world, Jesus himself. And then God saw that the feet were very large, larger than the feet of women and of boys. And the angel said to God again, those feet are too big and they will step on children's feet at children's parties. But God said, the feet of the father must be big and large so that when the father stomps his feet, everything that makes children afraid will fly away. When you're afraid at night, your father stomps his feet and then the things that make you afraid fly away so quickly because they are afraid of the noise of the stomping feet of your father. So the angel was about to give up and finally the angel touched the face of the father and the angel said, this is not a perfect image, there is a leak. And God said, that is not a leak, those are tears. And the angel said, men don't cry. But God said, fathers cry, and tears make fathers more beautiful. I believe that was St. Joseph. St. Joseph was a tall man, a figure to look up to. He had big hands, he had big feet, and I am very sure he also knew how to cry. So, as we close the year of St. Joseph, celebrating the conception of the Mother of God, let us thank God for these two creatures of the Creator, a woman and a man, Mary and Joseph. They were the stewards of Jesus, the custodians of Jesus, the caretakers of Jesus. And uh, I am very sure God the Father in heaven is eternally grateful for this woman immaculately conceived, for this man who taught the Son of God how to be a carpenter, who protected Jesus from threats and dangers. There is in all of us, my dear brothers and sisters, the seed of motherhood, but also the seed of custodianship, of fatherhood of St. Joseph. So December 8 should be a good opportunity for us to 
be mothers for everyone, to be stewards and caretakers and defenders of everyone, after the example of Mary, after the example of St. Joseph. Even now, I say to all of you, Merry Christmas.